Amanda Testa here with Find Your Feminine Fire, and today I'm going to be interviewing Kamei Caldwell. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for being here. Hooray, I'm happy to be here. Hooray. And I'll tell you a little bit about Kamei. She is an amazing woman. She actually started out as, she integrates profiting, body love, women's circles, and business owning into her coaching practice. And she has fit thousands of people from bras from cup size double A to N and every kind of person you can imagine. And really in these intimate settings with these um, these people, she was realized her ability to really help people talk more kindly to their bodies and themselves. So now I love this. She supports others to say hooray, inside, outside, and underneath through many beautiful channels, her website, hooray, hooray Kamei. And she's been on shows like Rachel Ray and Martha Stewart show, Tim Gunn's Guide to Style and many more. And she's also created some amazing projects, one of which is the More Than My Numbers project that's aimed at showcasing women's bodies without airbrushing. And also, I love this about her. She holds that for herself and all her images on her website and Instagram and everywhere. Um, no airbrushing anything. So really just encouraging people to let go of those numbers like age, weight, salary, and bra size. It's just information and not a definition. So she's awesome. I'm so happy to have you here today. Yay! Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. It's like early-ish for me. It's 10 a.m. here, but it's 8 a.m. for you. So good for good for us for being oh, up yes. ready. It worked out great today. My husband on Wednesdays, took, he can sometimes take my daughter to school. So it worked out perfect. And I actually kind of like this. Hi, Megan. Good to see you. Um, so yeah. And I'd love if you would just tell everyone a little bit more about you and kind of what led you to this work. Hooray. So this is sort of a long story. I will try to make brief, but um, but I'm just super excited to be here and to share what I'm doing and also um, encourage people to say hooray inside, outside and underneath. So my first step into this whole journey was back when I was in college and I was 19, just about to turn 20 years old. And I was putting myself through college and um, still am paying off all my student loans. And I was in need of, of a better job than what I had in New York City. I think I was making $8 an hour selling shoes. And I was, des I mean, I was, I was paying for an apartment, like food, everything. And so a good friend of mine was like, well, I think there's this bra shop opening up down in Soho if, um, if you're interested in working there. I said, does it pay more than $8 an hour? She said, yes. I said, great, I'm in. And so I went and so I always say I got into bra fitting for the money. Um, but I went down there got hired on the spot and I had no idea how it would change my life. So, you know, I went to school for musical theater and everything about that was about how I looked. I thought I didn't look pretty enough. I wasn't thin enough. I wasn't whatever enough. And I was comparing my body specifically to the airbrushed perfection bodies that I was seeing in magazines. So in my first week of bra fitting in New York City, I saw every kind of body you could imagine and like all these naked bodies that I just had never had any kind of access to before, except for my own in those magazines. And it totally changed my perception of normal and what a beautiful, healthy, able gift I had in this body. And so I started talking kinder to myself. And then I realized that I could help others talk kinder to themselves and their bodies through the process of the bra fitting. Instead of just helping them find a bra, I could be like, hey, by the way, who do you see in that mirror? And like, um, you know, help them stand taller and like, get their heart out there, right? Because if there's any kind of, I'm going to tilt this down so you can see, if there's any kind of like shame or confusion or discomfort or some kind of defining story you're telling yourself about this part of the body, that's right where our heart is. And so it's like, whew. and this is before I even knew any of like chakra stuff or anything. I just knew it felt better when I felt better here. And so I started helping other people do that. And I'll tell you, Amanda, I saw like every kind of body you could imagine. So like young women, elderly women, supermodels, moms of four, pregnant women, women after cancer and surgeries, like everything you could imagine. And I saw beauty in every single one of them. And I was like, I hope you can see it too. So that was back in 2005, million years ago. Uh, and then um, from that, I ended up working um, for Sex Fifth Avenue in their intimate apparel department on Fifth Ave here in New York City. Then I was quickly recruited by La Perla to work as their brand merchandiser at Sex Fifth Avenue in Bergdorf Goodman. So these were like really fancy, high-end, you know, luxurious places. And yet 
every woman still had the same negative thing to say to herself in the mirror. It's like a really universal thing going on here. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, it, with La Perla, I was on camera for them with the Martha Stewart show and Tim Gunn's Guide to Style. And this was all by the time I was 22, 23 years old. So from that, I did Ready to Wear for a year on Fifth Avenue. And quite frankly, clothing for me was a much more blunt tool. A bra fitting was such a sharper tool to help me help that person. Mm -hmm. And so after that, I, I ended up going back to bra fitting um, to back to the place where I started. And I worked my way up from being a bra fitter to a store manager, to a marketing manager, to the marketing director of this um, pretty popular online and in and brick and mortar store here in New York City. And then in 2014, I started my own business and I started it as a content creation company for, for lingerie brands because the way that people were talking to women about undergarments to me was not helpful. It was like, you don't look like her, so come buy our products that you can. And that to me just was not helpful. <laughs> to me, it was more like, you're already beautiful. Here's something that can support your beauty or help you find your own beauty. And so that was what I wanted to help brands share and, and, and create. And so I, I did that behind the scenes for a couple of years, really successful doing that, not really fulfilling. And so, um, I guess it was really the end of 2016, I decided to publicly partner with brands through my site and on TV and media. And last year in 2017, that just blew up. So it was always a more successful outcome when I partnered with people publicly and when I wasn't afraid to like show up and shine on, on their behalf. And so from that, I've been working, you know, with brands on every avenue you can think of. I literally get paid to travel around the world, like I'm going to Paris soon, and take pictures of me and my underwear, share inspiring messages on my site. They are totally cool with me not airbrushing my 33-year-old imperfectly beautiful body and, um, and and sharing the information that I have with, with people to help support them. And so maybe unnaturally or naturally, that turned into me opening up my coaching practice uh, in December of 2017, which I'd already been coaching. I just didn't know. I just didn't admit it because every bra fitting I had with, with someone was a coaching uh, opportunity. And so now I just, I look at it as um, a coaching, a, a larger landscape and bra fitting is just one coaching tool that I use. So, hooray. hooray. That was probably still a long story, <laughs> but, but I'm trying to get it all in there. 13 ish years of, of yeah. doing this work and how it evolved. Well, it's, well, so, it's fascinating, so fascinating, really. really. And, I, and love I love how those intimate experiences with the people you were fitting, I'm sure, did shape you perfectly for what you're doing. And I can just share one little thing about my personal experience of lingerie. And I am a huge lingerie fanatic. I love it. I think I mentioned this to you before. There's an amazing store here in Denver called Soul Store of Lingerie. I think Soul, yes. They're very popular in the intimate world. And I have to say, I think that when I first went into that store, it was one of those things that was probably one of the first steps that shifted my perception of femininity and what is beauty and like feeling really good in my own body. And they yeah. were so amazing at that. And I it's night and day. Like I am so in love with my store. That store, my friends will tell you, like I was even on a billboard for them one time. Wow. Look at you. And, um, but I do, I feel like I never, I always thought, you know, lingerie was for someone else or mm -hmm. this was just something that I would try to do to look sexy for someone else and realizing it has nothing to do with anyone else. It has everything to do with me and like how it supports me and just feeling good in my own skin, whatever shape, size, form it is. Yeah. It's it always evolves, right? Yeah. And I love that you're saying, you know, it's for me because I, I just wrote a, a blog post about for whom do you wear lingerie? Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we think, especially here in the United States, I want to be really clear about this. Like in the USA, the way that we view lingerie, and when you say the word lingerie, no one thinks of like their basic everyday bra that they're wearing. I include that, right? Like, Listen, today I'm wearing a neutral skin tone color stretchy bralette. It's like not sexy or whatever, but today I wanted to feel cozy. We have a storm coming. I'm in like a big oversized sweater. Like it's matching my mood today, right? But the thing is, lingerie in general is to me a very exploratory way to, to, to serve yourself and to care for yourself. So if that means 
you want to feel sexy today, by all means, put on something that means sexy to you. If you want to feel supported today, wear something that's super supportive. If you want to feel cozy, so forth and so on. And it's such a safe way to explore your own desires because it's typically underneath your clothes and you get to choose who you reveal it to. It could be no one. It could be everybody. I literally wear my undergarments in front of everybody, right? But like, it could be just the special someone or whatever. But my favorite thing, and you know, I work with a lot of people who are actually um, um, changing their identity, their personal identity, whether that means they are a transgender person or that means they're just growing up and they're sort of like, you know, am I the good girl? Am I the bad girl? Like, who am I? Undergarments are such an awesome way to explore with that because you can wear them underneath your clothes without ever having, but in the safety of never having to reveal it to anybody else first. It's like you get to play there and explore and see how it feels. Um, yeah, and, and my personal motto is to say her right inside, outside, and underneath. There's a lot of personal development work out there. There's tons of resources. There's lots of stuff going on, right? And a lot of it focuses on outside stuff and inside stuff. So by outside, I mean, like how you show up in the world, your outer appearance, your relationship with others, your relationship with your job, your relationship with your home, all of that stuff, right? And that's really important. And then there's also the inside stuff, which is your inner relationship with yourself, with the divine, even like what you're putting inside your body, right? All of the kind of heart-led stuff that is so important for like a, a really true transformation and getting to know yourself. What I think sometimes is forgotten in a lot of that is the underneath aspect, which is our bodies. Our bodies are our partners in this world and they're, you know, perfectly designed for the journey that we have. And we kind of sometimes forget to bring them along on that journey with us. And so for me personally, my, my journey of, of loving myself and getting to know myself actually started underneath. It was like getting to know this part of my body, getting to, you know, understand my body's needs and physically what she needed um, in order to like say hooray or like, quite frankly, be healthy, feel good, do what I wanted to do in the world. That's where I started when I was 19 or 20 years old. And it wasn't until later I actually started incorporating on a conscious level the the inside stuff. So everybody's journey is different and where they go. But I think you need all three in order to really to, to really have a fulfilling life. That's so powerful. And I think mentioning that, I love how you said our bodies are our partners in this life and they're perfectly designed for that. But we a lot of times will just leave that out. And I know there's a term out there, you know, called spiritual bypassing where, you know, you might be doing all this work up here, but it's not in the body. It's not integrated. And yeah. how that can you know, you still have to be, we're still on this earth, you know, we're still in these bodies. Yeah. And yeah, so many we're women divine creatures having a human experience. And part of being a human is having this body. Um, it's like, also, I think, I think of the same thing when people are doing a lot of inner work with me, which I really believe in working from the inside out, not the outside yeah. in. Either one's going to bring about change, but it's, it's like the richer, deeper experience is from the inside out. But it's funny because sometimes we'll get stuck on all the inside and then you forget. And, and then let's work out and bring in this work that you're doing into the outside world. And people will get stuck in that inside stuff and like forget, oh, yeah, that means I should probably show up to my job in this way. Or that means I should have that difficult conversation with my with my spouse or whatever it is. Right. It's like you, there's a there's a bigger there's a bigger picture here than than just one of those three prongs. Right. They're all important and vital for getting to where you want to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I love how you mentioned, too, because I've not really ever thought about this, how whatever you choose to wear that day can give you some support or, you know, I love that you said that because I know I've never thought of it that way. I thought, wow, that's very refreshing to think like I want to feel more supported. Maybe dress that way <laughs> and, yeah. you know, put on lingerie that feels that way. Or I love yeah. that. So that yeah, was... so, so my like per, one of my personal um, things I always do because I, you know, you mentioned I've been in the Rachel Ray show and um, I was on a really popular show in Canada last year. And um, I and I do a lot of like Facebook lives and all sorts of things. Right. Every time I do something that like I feel like I need a confidence boost or whatever. I wear like outrageous underwear, like outrageous, beautiful underwear. Sometimes it's like um, cheeky, it's like cute. Like I have a pair of underwear I love that's just cotton boy shorts, but it has um, a cat right 
right on the kitty, if you know what I'm talking about. And like sometimes, like it's like, how can you not have fun, you know, when you have pussy underwear on? Basically, yeah. you're like, like, it's so perfect. Um, but then also, you know, I will wear like beautiful lace, um, gorgeous underwear whenever I'm uh, need to like remind myself of my divine beauty. Like really, like don't forget. It's like every time you go to the bathroom, you pull your pants on. You're like, oh yeah, that's right. I'm actually really beautiful um, and and divinely created. It's just my personal way to like remind myself. And same thing goes with bras. So you know, bra fitting is a tricky business because a lot of times people are typically again in the United States, just looking for comfort because they're so fed up. They're like, the it's killing me. I want to rip it off. You know, it's, it's like, I feel like I just have to wear it in order to like fit in with society or so my nipples don't show or whatever. But like, there's no, there's like not a lot of looking forward to putting on undergarments in the morning. So my goal for people is especially if you wear a bra on a regular basis, which not everybody does. And I want to say it right now, I'm not, I actually don't care if you wear a bra or not. Like, whoops, sorry. Like I, my whole goal for you is to get in touch with this part of the body and to learn to love it and to use it as a gateway to your heart. So if you do wear bras on a regular basis, let's make sure they fit well and feel great and help support the kind of person that you want to be, right? So I try, my goal for everybody when I was doing bra fittings is that when you open that bra drawer or wherever you store your bras in the morning, instead of going, Ugh if I have to, and like put in like the best of the situation on, which you're like, oh, yes, right? What if you could open that broad drawer and go, how do I want to feel today? Ooh, I want to feel this way. Or, you know, and reach for that red lace bra. Or, oh, I want to feel this way. I want to feel held and secure and, and confident. So you put that like, you know, supportive, firm underwire bra on or whatever, right? Or I want to feel cozy. I'm wearing like a stretchy bralette today, right? It's like, how can we support the woman you are, both physically and emotionally, or the how you want to show up that day with a, almost one of the very first things that you put on in the morning? It's like your whole day starts differently. So in that way, again, it's a bra. Right. It's like to me, it's it's a basic foundational piece we have in our under in our in our wardrobes, which I think is very important. And it's just a raw. So like it's just a tool. It's just one way. It's just a practice that we can use to talk about something that's a lot deeper here. That's sort of that's sort of the point. <laughs> right. Right. And I know and you I mentioned, mentioned every, every opportunity, opportunity to fit, to fit someone. someone felt a bit like, like a coaching, coaching session. session. Oh, yeah. And I'm wondering, and I'm wondering if there's maybe, there's maybe one particular one. example that you could share of, you know, someone really getting the click that, wow, it's more than just a bra. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How can I sift through all of them? I mean, I'm sure there's a million, but I don't know if there's one in particular that you. Yeah, maybe share. not a million because I've only fit thousands of people. Ha! But but really, you know, so, OK, so let's put it this way again. I think anything that we put on our bodies or in our bodies has an opportunity to serve us in in a bigger way. So, for example, this is a story I share often. Um, I was working at a very teensy tiny bra fitting shop uh, on the Upper East Side, and we were doing a volume of of fittings every single day. It was, at one point, we were on um, Bethany Ever After with Bethany Frankel, and if anyone remembers that show not important but um people were coming in in like droves to this tiny tiny shop and when i say tiny i mean like my office is tiny like it was barely bigger than this and it was floor to ceiling bras and um this older couple came in and she had an appointment and her husband was so sweet he was like we're here to get her a bra today and like i've helped many elderly clients so i sort of was like great you know why are you here with her and um she revealed that she had uh, had got, undergone uh, a double mastectomy um, after breast cancer and that she had had reconstruction surgery and now she needed bras to fit her new figure. And right away, right there, that's an opportunity to support this woman with more than just the bra. That is not just about the bra. This woman doesn't even need a bra to be supported because she has implants that are pretty perky already, right? Right away, that's that's like, okay, great. What does she really need here? And what she needed was to, quote, feel like herself again, to want to feel like a woman again. When you've had your breast removed, which is such a common identifier as femininity, she didn't feel like a woman anymore. 
So I get emotional thinking about it. So, you know, we went into this teeny tiny fitting room. We're like face to face. And here I am a young woman in my like early twenties. And, you know, I, I have to, I have to earn her trust. I have to let her know like, girl, I got you, even though you're like more than twice my age, right? She's probably three, almost four times my age. And she, um, I was, she was in my hands literally, but also figuratively in my hands. And so coming to that exchange, that very literally intimate exchange of a naked elderly woman who's had her breast removed in front of you asking, please help me find my femininity again. You better show up to that in a compassionate and beautiful supportive way, or you have an opportunity here to kind of make this into something that. So we, I asked her what she was looking for and she said she wanted to feel like a woman again and she was so kind. And so I had to then be like, well, what bra is going to help her feel like a woman again and actually serve her physically because after reconstruction, there's many physical things to worry about. So I had to use both my like logical brain and then my compassionate heart to find the right thing for her. So we found this slightly molded bra. If anyone knows what 3D space or molding is, it's a really flexible, breathable molding. So it has shape, but it also is flexible, which when you have really firm reconstruction is super important. And it's kind of a softer company. Like there's like really firm companies out there where like there may be like a really firm underwear and super, you know, supportive elastic. This is sort of a more soft company. They're actually a French company that I'm working with when I go to Paris soon. Um, and um, they're, they're so elegant, but also wearable every day. Um, if you need to know the brand, it's Simone Perel. It's a very popular French company in France, and they're they're here in the U.S. too. And so, uh, it was like a cherry red with a smooth cup and a little bit of lace on the side, and dainty little straps. And, and she was a petite person in like a little a little you know back band. And I put this bra on her, and you should have seen her face, Amanda. She was like, <sighs> and seeing herself in the mirror with this beautiful bra on next to this woman who was supporting her, she started tearing up and she was like, oh my gosh, she's like, I feel like a woman again. She was so thankful and her, this whole time her husband's sitting outside, you know, kind of like, oh gosh, I hope she's okay, if this is going okay, whatever. So we, I found her like four or five more bras and she was just so pleased and she was so thankful that at the end of it, as she came out, you could see him like stand up to greet her, like, did it go okay, you know, and like, Think about it, she probably told him her fears and how vulnerable it is to tell your husband, I don't feel like a woman anymore, I don't feel like I'm your wife anymore, whatever. And for him to come with her and for her to come out and go, it went so well, I feel so great. Like, I, we were all in tears, like the whole shop was like, <laughs> you know? Because in that, in that moment, in that whole experience, that's more than a bra, you know what I mean? Like, and she she possibly could have gotten that kind of support with other experiences, right? But it's like, this was both a, a practical, physical thing and an emotional experience for her that every morning when she opens her bra drawer now, instead of going, well, I hate my body, hate these breasts, hate these things and hate what's happened to me, hate this whole stupid thing I had to go through, cancer sucks, right? Instead going, oh, I feel like a woman again. I don't know if that's going to cure every single thing she tells herself about cancer and about her body, but it's certainly a beautiful step. So that's one example. I love it. And I think one of the things too that you mentioned earlier that I just wanted to, to bring back in for a second is how seeing so many different shapes and sizes of yeah. people gives you a different perspective. And I think that is kind of one of those things like for most of us, especially if you're you know a straight woman, you don't see many other women naked unless it's right. in an airbrushed magazine or something like that or porn, which is totally airbrushed and nothing. Right. You know, so you don't maybe have a realistic view of what beauty is. And I feel like that's kind of one of the a special, you know, little insight you have that you've been yeah. able to see beauty think, in all these different shapes and sizes and bringing that yeah. out to the world with your I, I feel extremely fortunate to have gone through that when I was 20 years old because I, I actually wish every woman could be a bra fitter for a week <laughs> because the, the, the bodies that you'll see. And, and again, it's not like those other bodies were bad and mine was good and it's helped me see my own beauty. It was like, I could see the beauty in all of them. Why can't I see it in myself? It was that kind of experience. And so many women will come in and, and will be exposing themselves to another 
woman for the first time too, right? So they're coming in and taking their top off and you can see all this judgment of themselves go, oh my God, oh my God, is my body okay? Are my breasts normal? Is she, what's she thinking of me? And so again, it's an opportunity for me to reassure her, hey, you're fine, everything's great here and um, there's no judgment here. I'm not judging you, so I welcome you not to judge yourself. So a lot of times people will go, so one one thing I always talk about <laughs> in a bra fitting is um, the a, asymmetrical breasts and how breasts are never perfectly symmetrical. It's like hands and feet. Like my left foot is bigger, my right hand is bigger, my left breast is bigger, and I'm actually pretty symmetrical. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to tell looking at me, right? But it's important for me to know. And I, I say this all the time to people. I'm like, listen, like, especially if there's only a slight difference. I'm like, when you're walking on the street, it's not like someone's gonna be like, oh my God, your left breast is bigger. Like, it's not even about that. It's more like you need to know so you can fit to that breast and have a little room here rather than fit to this smaller one and have them spilling onto the other one, right? It's just important for you to know about your body. And so many times I'll ask people, do you know which of your breasts are bigger? And they go, no, they like freak out. They're like, oh my God. And I'm like, okay, again, if you don't notice, like no one else is going to notice. I just notice because I stare at boobs all day long. But that kind of, the, and then there are other people who are like, I'm like, do you know which of your breasts are right? And they're like, yes, this one. It's like so, oh my God, it's so different. Like, I know you can see it right away. And I'm like, okay, first of all, not that different. Second of all, everyone's breasts are different sizes. So unless you have a real, like totally different cup size happening here, which again is very common. I'm gonna let everybody know it's so common. Um, no one's gonna notice, like don't worry about it. And there's so many beautiful ways to even that out, right? But I didn't know that. I had no idea until I saw other naked bodies like, oh wow, this is actually really common. I also had no idea that people had stretch marks in cellulite before they were 40 or 50. I've had stretch marks since I was 10 years old because I went through a growth spurt. I went from like, you know, five foot to five foot seven in like a year and my body was like, right? I just didn't know. I had no idea. I didn't, I just, I just was, had this perfect, you know, image in my mind that was not reality. So yes, I'm very, very blessed to know and understand what bodies look like. And I welcome everybody to be a bra fitter for a week or do what you can to see real naked bodies. There's lots of awesome projects out there where you can see great, you know, uh, everyday bodies. And Instagram is a great place to go and see um, real bodies. But also, I wanted to say one more thing I'm kind of forgetting now. Oh, besides just seeing real bodies, I've seen women through every stage of life. So like young women, because again, when I was 14, I didn't see anybody's body. So 14 to like pregnancy and how that changes the body. I've never been pregnant myself and I feel so prepared to know what happens to the female form now through pregnancy and after pregnancy and through cancers and surgeries and everything you can imagine. So that has been a, a, a gift, like a real, a real gift. And it, I kind of feel like it's my job now to help inform other people of that. I have a very capable, able, probably traditionally beautiful body. I'm straight size and like a size four. Um, and yet I use my body as like a stepping stone to let people know what normal can look like because my size, for example, I wear a 32E or a 30F. It's so hard to see now because I'm in like a, you know, big sweater. But people always go, what? And so that was sort of the whole premise of more than my numbers, which which is like a big part of my heart now. Yes, yes I, love I love that. that. Thank you for sharing that. that. Yeah. And I think, and I think one of the one other, other I do many things with your coaching practice. practice. And you mentioned, you mentioned that. So, women, women and, and beautiful, beautiful things, things for women. For women. Um, um, but I'm curious if there's anything else that, you know, you wanted to share about kind of how this experience from Roffening kind of led you to really be an amazing coach and, you know, get this practice where, you know, you mentioned you just started it, but you've been doing it for 13 yeah. years, right? Yeah, great question. So, um, so I have... I had a real judgment around coaching and people who call themselves coaches. Coaching is sort of like the wild west right now, right? There's like no, you don't have to be certified and so forth and so on. But yet <laughs> I was working with a coach for like three years, different coaches for like three years. 
business coaches, life coaches, everything. And I just wasn't ready to call myself that because I had a lot of judgment about myself, about my capabilities, about, you know, the whole industry of coaching. And so I had to really let that go because people were asking me over and over and over again. So like, are you a coach? Can you be my coach? Do you do coaching? And I was, I was like, no, that's not for me. And so I had to get over that because if I really asked myself, which I did on a regular basis, how can I show up and serve people? What do people need? What's the medicine that I have that I can give to someone? It was always coaching. It was always holding space for someone. It was always helping them create a new pathway of love between themselves and with others, always. And that was just one way to do it. Profiting was one way to do it. And coaching was like a bigger way to serve that person. So um, as I mentioned, you know, I've been profiting for 13 years and that was sort of a real practice in holding space for someone in a very intimate setting. That is invaluable to me now um, and sort of led me here. <clears throat> but I've actually been leading women's circles and holding space for groups of women it, doing very intimate work around the new moon for three years. And I've never missed a month for the new moon. So like on a regular, consistent basis, holding space for those people. So it was only natural for me to then go into, in my opinion, for me to go into coaching. Um, and again, bra fitting is sort of one tool that I use in there. Most of the people that I coach are actually virtual. So we have, you know, video chats and talk, doing a lot of inside out work. And then we do a deep dive day where we have an op we have these options of what will serve them most. It could be a three hour, you know, meditation and journaling experience. It could be we actually do some outside work and say, great, we've done all this inside work. Let's get some stuff done. Let's like bang out your, um, if she's like a woman in business, like your um, product offerings and your pricing, or um, let's talk about your home situation or whatever, right? Or it could be a bra shopping trip with me, if, especially if she can come to New York City. Almost everyone has chosen the bra shopping. And it's because again, we're doing all this other work that we wanna bring the body along. We want to discover who's underneath these clothes and how can I bring her into this whole picture? So that, and I think again, if if we can find a physical and emotional way, a, a tool practice to help your heart go from here to here, that's the kind of woman I want in the world. That's the kind of person I want, like making decisions for our country, making decisions in our families, making decisions for herself, like from here instead of from here. I want that heart led person in the world. So, so yeah, so coaching is just the new, the new next way to do it. Yeah, and, uh, that. Thanks. The physical, the physical change, change in the body. Yeah. Really yeah. Hunched, Hunched over, over really your heart. heart. Yeah. Like really putting your chest and your breasts and your heart forward into the world. Yep. I like to say that our, our breasts and our chest are the gateway to our heart. So if that gate is locked, with shame or confusion, what size do I even wear? And the shame could be they're too big, they're too small, they're not perky enough, they're um, bringing unwanted sexual attention, like whatever that shame is. And then discomfort, like physical discomfort of like oh, this underwire hurts, this is digging, this is falling down. It, you know, that, that gate's gonna be a little bit harder to open. So as soon as you can, um, support that part of the body with a gate that's easier to open the heart is right there it's right there ready for you so that's how i feel anyway that's thank you for sharing that i love that and i feel i'm you probably are familiar with the you know in the dallas tradition that's something i'm very into breast massage is so huge and like opening up your heart and like just for so many women myself included when i first started to really love myself and my body that was a practice that was game changer for me awesome because you know i just first of all i don't think i ever spent that much attention paying attention to myself in a loving way like that so yeah yeah oh i'm so glad to hear that i love that yeah breast massage is like one um one way to to do that and i think you know um there's lots of different practices out there yeah. so we won't go over any now but yeah it's a great it's a great practice and I know we'll be wrapping things up in a moment. So I just wanted to see if there was any last things you'd like to share or any um, words you'd like to pass along. 
Yes. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, as I mentioned it briefly, is the More Than My Numbers project. Yes. This yes. was a, um, a project that was on my heart for a long time. And when I was working behind the scenes with brands creating marketing campaigns and things like that, I kept pitching it and they kept saying, oh, this is great, but like we just have the money to fund it. And I was like, you know, screw this. <laughs> like I'm just going to do it and look for a couple of sponsors here and there to get this going. And I was really fortunate to have you know, great volunteers that help me make this happen. But basically the whole premise is that I really feel like we tend to define ourselves by numbers a lot. And that could be our weight, our age, our salary, and really like whether that means we're doing, we're good or bad or successful or not successful or pretty or not pretty, right? It's like really defining for us. And the biggest definer for us, I think, was bra size. So when someone would come into me into affinity with me and she had been wearing a 34 C her entire life and we fit her and the best size for her in a particular bra was a 32 double D, which is so common to go down a band size and up a cup size. It seems like you're going up two cup sizes. I have resources for you on this if you need the math help. Um, her, her, her perception of herself would totally change because if you're a C cup, you're one thing. And if you're a double D, you're a different thing. I didn't actually change anything about her body, but her perception of her body is now completely changed. So in general, if you are, this is just the stories I saw people telling themselves. If you're an A cup or, or a B cup, it's like, you know, you're petite, you're not very sexy, you're not super feminine, you're tomboy, you're practical, you're athletic. If you're a B or C cup, you're average, one of the will, not too sexy, but not dull. You're like everyone's, you know, girl next door. You're kind of boring and normal. If you're a D or a double D, you're busty, you're chesty, you're sexy, you're um, maybe a little bit too much. Um, you're outspoken. You're, um, again, too much. And if you're above a double D, if you're a triple D, F, G, H, all the way up to N cup, remember, if it up to N cup, you are oversexed, you're sloppy, you're fat, you are a slut. I mean, there's a lot of stories we tell ourselves that come with these. And I know this isn't a number, but it's attached to the bra size, like 32, 34, whatever. So um, I had to then do a lot of education around when you change a band size, that changes the cup size, number one. And then number two, that it's just a number and a letter. This is not a definition of who you are. And that was where I would use myself as an example all the time that I wear a 32 double D. I'm not too much. I'm not oversexed. I'm not whatever, right? And like really changing the story that we're telling ourselves and forgiving ourselves for buying in, into that judgment or that misbelief and then asking ourselves what's really true. So I, the more than my numbers project is sort of to starting with bra size because that's my jam, but all the women that are in this project share a number that has kind of defined them and held them back and then how they're opening up their mind and saying it's important to know that number like it's important to know my health number it's important to know my weight it's important to know my bra size but to use it as information not as a definition so in that way um they're really taking a brave step forward saying you know sharing numbers like the number of pregnancies they've had or lost the number of um, I have two women who are talking about weight, one who um, completely ignored the number and then became obese, and then another who was so obsessed with it that she ended up having an eating disorder. So it's like, how can we find that happy balance of knowing it but not being defined by it? Um, anyway, so these are all beautiful stories that these women share. There's no airbrushing. It's really these women sharing their, from their hearts. And I hope that it encourages other people to get to know their numbers, to get to know themselves, to get to like use numbers as information and not a definition. So if you want to know more information about that, that you can go to morethanmynumbers.com or if you go to hooraykamei.com and click on more than my numbers, it's all there. And I welcome you to share some of your numbers and, and to start talking about it with your friends and with yourself and getting to know them a little bit. And there's a really great tool I have of just learning how to measure yourself for your bra size starting points. And so many people are afraid to take these numbers because of what it might mean about them. So I encourage you to use it as a practice to lovingly and compassionately take those numbers and see, you know, what what comes up for you, how you feel about that number, what it means to you or doesn't mean, and just use it as a practice. So I wanted to say that. That's it. I love that. 
That is such an amazing project. I am blown away by it. I think that it's so powerful when you think of it that way, because I know for myself, yeah, there was totally times where I would define myself by my numbers or felt, mm -hmm. oh, I'm happy now because I'm this number or yeah. uh, now I'm this number and I'm not yeah. happy or yeah. this means yeah. that. I mean, it's so yeah. interesting when you point that out, how we do define ourselves so much by that. Yeah, for me, the biggest one was weight. I yeah. wanted to match my number to my girlfriend's numbers in high school. And they were like, you know, five inches shorter than me and had a different build. And, you know, I just like, I thought as soon as I matched their number, I would be pretty too and cute and petite and whatever. And I did match their number and I was sick all the time and completely consumed by the this, this scale and miserable. So loosening up my grip on the number and paying more attention to the big picture was really important for me. So I actually had to swing all the way to the other side where I didn't weigh myself for years. I had no idea what that number was. I don't think that's right for everybody, but for me at the time it was because I knew I was so attached to that number. And then as it kind of swung back, like now I can put, I can stand on a scale and see that number, feel what it, feel something about it and then release it and then go, okay. That doesn't mean anything about me, but it's important information for me to have for my physical well-being. Awesome. So, uh, so yeah, and then just sharing your numbers out loud. Like again, I tell people my bra size all the time. I tell them my age. I'll tell you my weight. I probably weigh about like 143 right now. I don't even. I, that's like a guess, but like in between 140, 145. And um, I think like I told someone that recently. And they're like, what? I would have guessed you with like 120. And I was like, no. I think again, like we have these ideas of what a number is going to look like. People think I'm like a 34 seat. No, 32 dollars a girl. So anyway, it's I think it's just one step in the whole process of, of getting to know yourself and releasing any kind of definition you have around something. Right. And knowing that it, it's OK if it changes. Right. I think that's it, it yes. too because, hello, I've had my bra size has changed a bunch over the years you know, before kids during kids. Exactly. Like even now it still changes. And I was just oh. thinking, like, I think I need some new bras because they're fitting differently now. That's probably just part of life. You everything is cyclical, everything changes, but just accepting that and not defining yourself by it. I love that. Thank you yeah. for, for bringing that today. You're welcome. And by the way, your bra size changes all the time. When people are like, I've been a 34B my whole life, I'm like, I know you haven't, but okay, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so even if your body stays pretty consistently the same size throughout your whole life. There's no way. And right now, currently, today, I can wear nine different bra sizes that all fit. So, like, I just want to release the, like, I am a 34B or I am a 32G. Like, you are not. You are you. And in this particular bra from this particular brand in this particular style, the 32G might fit you the best today. That's that's as far as we can go, right? It's like we, we, we there's, like, different brands fit differently. They use different sizing. Um, so like, let go of you being a size, please, for everybody's sake. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for being here today. And just for everyone listening, you can find Kame at www.hooraykame.com. I'll make sure to put all that information in the notes and also where you can find her more than numbers campaign. So you can check that out and be encouraged to share your numbers with others as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for having me. And if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to shoot me an email or I have lots of free resources on my site um, about bra fitting and, and beyond about um, everything you can imagine about inside, outside and underneath. Happy to support you. Yay. And if too, yes, please post any questions that you have and we'll make sure to get back to you and answer those as quickly as we can. And yes. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Bye. We'll see you.